Hello, welcome to HarperCollins live stream. My name's Amy, I'm from Bella Magazine, and I'm here with the wonderful Helen Warner, who is the author of The Story of Our Lives, which is out today. Yay. Hi, Helen. Hi, Amy. How are you? Good, very good, very excited. Happy publication day. Thank you very much. It is a brilliant, brilliant novel. Thank you. A real, real page turner. So only for people who are about to go on holiday, it's they have to pick it up at the airport. I agree. I think it's such a great holiday read. I know so. I wrote it, so I would say that. But <laughs> I do think it is perfect for it a is, holiday. It's, it's got so many elements, the friendship, um, such warmth in it, but also it's, it's a real roller coaster yeah, it is. read as well. Obviously, we're going to be careful not to give too many uh -huh. spoilers away. Um, but do you want to briefly explain what, what the book is about? So it's about four friends who met at university who um, have, uh, they go away on a girls' weekend every year, once a year, and, um, but you only ever catch up with them on the girls' weekend away. And it spans 20 years, and in that time, obviously, a lot happens in their lives. There's sort of births, deaths, marriages, and um, there's quite a lot of darkness, even though it's a very mm. summery, happy book. Yeah. There, is, there are sort of deeper themes and sort of slightly darker themes, but it's, a, it's essentially about friendship and about whether... It's about female friendship yeah. and the bond that female friends have and whether it can survive something that's quite a yeah. huge explosion within the four of them that somebody's been keeping a secret that kind of threatens and, and also 20 years is a long time, it is a long time to be friends. Yeah. And so in any friendship, there's lots of ups and downs. Yes. And I know your four friends certainly face a lot of... Ups and downs. Ups and downs, yeah. a lot of drama. Yes. Um, what gave you the idea for the um, book? What gave me the idea was that I, I think like most women, I'm sure you do, mm. I do, um, lots of my friends do, we have, a f I have a friendship group and we go away as a friendship group um, every year. It used to be once a year when our children were smaller, yeah. so we've been going away once a year for 20 years now. And um, it just gave me the idea, not for the characters, I hasten to add, because, <laughs> you know, obviously that's not my friends, but... Um, and they are but very the, complicated characters. They are complicated so. characters, but I think the idea of just friends going away for a girls' weekend, loads of people do it, loads yeah. of women certainly have a girls' weekend away. And it just was the idea of it, and I loved One Day by David Nichols, and so the idea of only catching up with them on the girls' weekend away was quite, you know, that's where that came from yeah. as well. And, yeah, it's from my own friendship group of really good friends yeah. that we, we met when we were, you know, we met many years ago, 25, 30 years ago. And we're all sort of in our 50s now. And, yeah, so it was about, it, was a, it wasn't obviously about them because they're quite strong characters and they'd be really cross with me if I said <laughs> it was about them. But they'd it was, want royalties. They'd want royalties, <laughs> they definitely would. Um, and, but it just was a good nugget of an yeah. idea of what would happen if you just did every year for 20 years. So that's what I've done. And one thing I really loved about the book as well is, so obviously these group of girls do meet every few years, and you always start the chapter with a big event. So it starts with the death of Princess Diana. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody can remember where they were mm -hmm. when that happened. Um, but I loved all the other events you talked about. Um, the first year Big Brother aired, um, X Factor airing, and um, Paul McCartney and Heather Mills, their split. What, those events that you speak about within the book, what made you think about, why did you pick them? If I'm really honest, the only one that I really thought about properly yeah. was Diana. So that was, I thought, what is, I'm a journalist and um, like you and uh, like, funnily enough, my group of girlfriends, we're all journalists. Wow. And um, I thought, what is the biggest news story of my life? And it's obviously yeah. the death of Diana. So that was a very good starting point. I thought, right, we're going to start in 97. I finished it in 2017. So that was obviously the 20 yeah, year well. um, thing. and. And then over those years, I looked for news stories within those years 
of things that I kind of remembered. Not that they, there will ne never be a bigger story than the death of Diana, yeah, of but course. I thought about what were the big stories that I remembered from those 20 years. So obviously I was alive and, and I remember very well yeah. where I was and what I was doing when Diana died. And therefore it was just over those years. So they, they're quite unusual, some of them, mm. uh, in that they are, you know, the Big Brother launching. Yeah. But, but I for think me, everybody remembers that as well. Exactly. And I think also being a, a journalist and working in TV, then going on to be a TV producer and working in TV, Big Brother launching was a huge thing for TV. And so therefore, it kind of was important in my memories yeah. and my life. And I and I can remember it really, really well. And sort of Clinton and Monica yeah. uh, Lewinsky, it was sort of those events. They weren't particularly um, cataclysmic in terms mm. of the world, no. but they were just what I remembered. Yeah. And so I thought women of my age will kind of remember a lot of those news events from those Absolutely. years. So that's how I picked them. It wasn't particularly well thought out. It was just kind of, what do I remember most from that year? I certainly found it really nostalgic because I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. X Factor, because I struggled to remember a time when were. X Factor wasn't on. Yeah. It seems to be on all yeah. the time. Um, it was just really interesting, yeah. really. You're a lot younger than me. <laughs> no, <laughs> I remember X much. Factor launching really <laughs> well. But it was, um, yeah, it was just those kind of big events that you thought, yeah, I, I kind of remember that. And it places yeah. you. You sort of remember what you were doing, yeah. what your, you know, how many children you had at the time or where you were or what you were. It, it just kind of places you. I and think. I think it just works really well in moving the story on as yes, well yeah. um, and developing the characters and seeing how they grow and yeah. during that era. Yeah, really. I, I'm glad you think that. I, I yeah. agree. But yeah, I, you know, definitely. I would, because <laughs> that was my idea. Now we've got a question. Okay. Uh, so Lindsay uh, is asking, are the girls anything like your uni friends? So we've obviously just touched on right. that. So no, not really. Um, but I think there was one friend who's a really dear friend. She's not somebody that I go away on. She's not part of the girl. None of the girls are the girls that I go away with. Right. Um, really, at all. But a lot of them, uh, but the four of them are amalgamations of different people that I've worked with or yeah. met or known over the years and loved, you know. And I've got a really great friend who actually lives in America now, and I saw her last year. And I said to her, you know, I've just finished this book and, you know, one of the girls, that's, that's you, I've based her on you. And she was so pleased. Oh. And I said, oh, but actually, mm, she's got a terrible drug habit and she, um, <laughs> and she kind of has a penchant for married men. And she was like, <laughs> yeah, being really, yeah, thanks very much. But actually, right. it's, so, it's not what they do, but the yeah. person is based on people that I know and love and they all, they're all based on people that I kind of have loved yeah. uh, over the years but just I must stress what they do <laughs> is not based on those people. But your friends can read it and think oh I think this might be me. Yeah yeah. There's I didn't have an affair with another friend's husband. No exactly <laughs> exactly yes. Yeah. Brilliant and Katie's asking um, how long did it take you to write the novel? Well, um, and this is interesting because how you wrote yes, it as well and where yeah. you wrote it. So I r wrote all my books up until the one that I've just finished. Because this, this is your This is my fourth. fourth. Um, so I wrote them all on the train to work. So I would catch the train. I have quite a long commute. I live in, I live now in Colchester in Essex, but I, before that I lived in Harwich in Essex, which is quite a long commute. Right. So it was a good hour and a half on the train each morning and I would get on the train and I would open my laptop write like crazy for an hour and a half and then get off the train not think about it again go and do my day job which is quite a you know high powered yeah, difficult day job you did work <laughs> for ITV I worked for Channel 4 yeah. when I wrote my first ones and uh, then I went to ITV so very busy, very high pressure day job. And then I would get on the train in the evenings and go home and carry on writing. So 
actually it was surprising how much you can do in that short, very intense really? period of time. And I think there's something about the train moving forward that mm. makes you um, write more. Yeah. So um, I would write a lot, and I'm quite a mm. fast typist. I've been a journalist, and I'm you know used I'm to deadlines, tight deadlines. Used to well. deadlines, and very uh, much used to kind of. So I type really quickly. Mm. So I would just be you know crazily writing, yeah. get off the train and forget about it. But usually I could do. On a really amazing day, I could maybe do two and a half to three thousand words a day. Wow. So I would get off the train, and you know, go, uh, that was my day, and then I would start all over again the next day. So, in answer to was it Katie? I think yeah. the question was it was about six months. About six months. And then the editing bit happened. So you delivered the book, and then you get notes back about editing, yeah. and that is my favourite bit. Really? I love the editing process because you've yeah. written the book, you've mm. done the hard bit, and I always think writing your 100,000 words or however many yeah. words, you write and it's like climbing a mountain or right. doing a triathlon or doing a marathon and you're yeah. writing and, you, you know, it's quite a slog. And particularly up to 50,000 words, you're kind of, this is climbing the mountain. Once you're, I feel like once you're past 50,000 words, it's then going back down the mountain right. and it's a much more enjoyable ride yeah. towards the ending but it's still quite it's still a slog writing yeah. a book is a slog of and it is. it's hard work it's huge. but editing, and alongside a day job as well alongside and a, demanding a day job, day job absolutely but editing a book is so fabulous because yeah. you 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 know most editors are brilliant and yeah. fabulous and they don't they only want to make your book better of they're course. not trying to ruin it yeah. so i have a policy that i don't know if I should say this, because then <laughs> she might get too much power go to her head. But um, I just do whatever the editors tell me, oh. because I think they don't want. Mm. They know what sells yeah. and what readers yeah, want, that's true, that's and true. therefore just do what they tell you to do, yeah. and rewrite that bit or add that character in, yeah. or just you know. I think with me, because I've worked in television for yeah. many many years. I have a tendency to write like a screenplay. So a lot of the editors to me have said, you should color it in a bit. You yeah. need to add a bit more detail, add a bit yeah. more color, and it's like coloring in a book. And I get that completely. And it's so lovely because you've done the hard bit, yeah. you've written the book, and all you're doing is making it better. better which is a great feeling. And it's just so great. I yeah. love, love, love the editing process. So it never takes me that long because I just do what I'm told. Do what you're told. And I really enjoy doing <laughs> that bit as well. So the it's dream probably author. yeah, it's probably six six months to write it and then yeah. maybe a couple of months on editing it. Oh brilliant. And Stephen asks, this is a brilliant question. Is there any chance for a follow up? Could could Story of Our Lives be a series? Well, because I the think, girls, there is potential. Yeah, I think there could be a follow-up, yes. and it's interesting with uh, books that I've written in the past. So RSVP, which mm. is my first book, um, quite a few of my books feature many women. So um, RSVP, uh, RSVP featured um, four women. This features four women. Mm. Um, uh, Stay Close to Me featured three women. It, you know, I'm quite used to doing that, and people quite often say, oh, would you do a follow-up to RSVP, yeah. or would you do a follow-up to this? I think if I was going to do a follow-up, it probably would be this one, because yeah. because I can see so much scope for a follow-up. Um, I really can. <laughs> yeah, I would I would love to do a follow-up. And, and I, I do feel that it has scope as a, um, like a kind of, British Big Little Lies yeah. um, on telly, you know, yeah. I can see it being it a really, really good could. series. And so yeah, hopefully, who knows? And then, you know, I know that um, Leanne Moriarty is doing the next series of Big yeah. Little Lies, even though it was just one book. Yeah. This could so be the next ITV drama. Well, you never know. Wouldn't that be brilliant? <laughs> brilliant. How fabulous would that be? Um, and Julie is asking, which of the characters is your favourite and why? Facebook. Um, I think in this one, uh, my favourite is Melissa, and it sort of goes back to what I was saying about my friend in New York, because it's sort of based on her, the character. Yeah. And I know she's very flawed, and she's a bit naughty, and she's not, you know, she doesn't particularly behave 
very well sometimes. But I really love her. Yeah. I, th I really love who she is. I and I think characters are Yeah, good, and I think they? also because I really love my friend who, right. who it's kind of based on. And I can't think of her without smiling or thinking yeah. how much I love her and how brilliant she is and how amazing she is. And I feel that this character, even though she is, yes, as we've said, very flawed and a bit naughty. Um, Troublesome. Yeah, <laughs> but I really love her. And, and they're the funnest yes, friends. Yeah, yeah, and she's <laughs> quite fun to write. Melissa was really fun to write. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, Kim is asking, how do you discipline in yourself to write a book? Which yeah and do you have a special writing zone obviously well the this. train has always the been train. my writing zone but um so it's a really good question because now um so i left itv at christmas so i didn't have my train journey and i were had, you scared about that yeah because that had been your comfort writing yeah. zone but it was um really hard mm. i was surprised how hard it is when you're just sitting at a desk with your computer mm. thinking, right, I've got all day to write instead of an hour and a half each way wow. on the train. And actually, it's much, much harder, much harder. Yeah. And so you have to be rid, that's where your discipline has to come yeah. in. And I think that's probably from you being a journalist as yeah. well, used to tight deadlines, yes. especially TV, yes. daily TV yes. shows. It's really hard. Yeah. And so what I, had to train myself out of with difficulty was not to read the entire internet before mm. you start writing in the morning you know just try and my daughter had come up with a she'd been doing her a-levels and she said oh I've got this really great app that you can kind of switch everything off so you actually can't get onto the internet until wow. you've done two hours work or you've done whatever that's amazing I think and I need was, that yeah and it was it was um Part of me didn't really want to do it because yeah. I sort of liked going on the internet yeah. and mail online and, you know, just, you know, Bella or whatever, you know, I'm yeah. terrible for kind of, I love sort of gossip, gossip. and, you know. Um, Who doesn't? All that sort of stuff. So I found it, I found it enormously hard to be disciplined yeah. when I had to discipline myself yeah. instead of the train journey gave me the discipline. But I did get there eventually, yeah. um, but it was, it was quite, it's quite tough and it's mm. it's hard when you're just it's just you and the computer yeah that's tough but you're used to all the communities yeah. around you yeah exactly I mean when I used to because I come in from Colchester it's mm. quite a sort of into Liverpool street then yeah. it's um they're all bankers and right. you know you're surrounded by city workers and bankers and I'd be writing on my laptop and I'm doing a sex scene and I'd kind of be going da, 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 and I'd sort of lower the lid of my laptop a bit more because I'd be conscious that the man <laughs> sitting next to me it. could read it a bit and then lower it a bit more and think oh my god they put down their getting... financial ties <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're thinking oh that looks quite good <laughs> <laughs> she's writing and a couple of people over the years yeah. have sort of say uh, being, a lot of people have noticed that I right. appear to be writing a book oh, or writing okay. yeah. a story but don't say anything. Mm. But then others have gone, what are you doing? Are yeah. you writing? And have you written? And I said, oh yeah, yeah, I've got, you know, have, well, have you had anything published? And it's, oh I kind of quite like that. Yeah. I bet they think you're writing about them. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Brilliant. Um, and Rachel is asking, do you miss working in TV? Um, I miss, yes, yes, of course. Mm. Um, but, in some ways, I feel like I still sort of am. I do a little bit of consultancy yeah. for different people, and but also my dream, and it's always been my dream since I was a little girl, is to get a screenplay. Oh, wow. So I am kind of yeah. still working in TV in a sense that I'm talking to people about the screenplay and whatever. So yeah. it's a very different thing to what I was doing, which was daily life yeah. programs, which were which I loved and were great. Yeah. So I'd say I do miss it. I miss the people enormously because I loved all the people that I worked with and um, the fun and the buzz of it every day. Um, but I feel like I'm still in it a bit and I also think I'll go back to it yeah. in the not too distant future. So Maybe it's when been you're quite producing a nice story of our Exactly, lives. exactly. <laughs> but I think it might be slightly different, a different, yeah 
form of television for me. It yeah. might be drama, where you know I've not done that before, and that would be great and That'd would be, be a real very challenge. Exciting. So yeah, I do miss it a bit, but I feel like I'm still in it a bit, and I feel like I'll be going back to it quite soon as well. Watch this space. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Kim is asking, who are your favourite authors, and what genres do you like to read? I love. Um, I really love chick lit, and I don't see it as a kind of disparaging no. term. I I love Leanne Moriarty. Oh, yeah. Absolutely so adore Marion Keys. I think Marion Keys is one of the greatest writers of our generation, yeah. and I think she's. I think if she was a man, she would never be spoken about yeah. in the kind of way she's spoken about, as if it's somehow lesser fiction. I think she's the most unbelievably brilliant writer, yeah. Marion Keys. I love her books and um, deal with really tough, difficult issues. And mm. um, you know, I'm a huge, huge fan of hers. Um, Leanne Moretti, as I've said, I adore. I've Always, you know, I've yeah. already got her next book on order because it's yeah. not out. She can't do it, anything wrong, can she? No, All hers she's just so fabulous. Brilliant. She's such a fabulous writer. Um, but I also really love crime. I love yeah. crime fiction. So I love Peter James yeah. and the Roy Grace series. I've always snapped those up. Mm. Um, I love kind of any, um, you know, um, B. A. Paris behind closed yeah. doors. I read. I think I read that in about. Four hours. So did I, I remember when it came out. Yeah. I downloaded it to my Kindle, and my son was swimming or something yeah. boring, and I was kind of started. I'd taken a book along, and mm. I started to read it, and I was just, like, oh my God, this book is so brilliant! I just can't put it down. It was so good, it was and like I just you couldn't no, stop turning the page. I, I loved it. it. it was one so of my I really favorites. love crime or sort of crime thriller mm -hmm. sort of fiction. Um, I don't. Um, I'm not, uh, I've got an English degree, but I got, God knows how, actually, because I sort of don't really, I'm not really that into the kind classics. of highbrow fiction. Yeah. Um, and I, I just love books that are easy to read yeah. and that are page turners. That's what I yeah. love. Well, I just think it's, you know, nice. You want to turn off. You don't yeah. want to have to think or keep rereading a yeah. passage because you haven't understood it. Yeah. Um, and, or where they're trying to be too clever, just oh tell a really yeah. great story. And, and this I, is why women's fiction is so brilliant. Yes, yeah. So I, I, you know, there are so many. Oh, mm. Jojo Moyes, I haven't even mentioned. I loved, yeah. I love her work. I actually love her earlier work. So yeah. the last letter to your lover, I yeah. really loved. I really like the one plus one. Yes, that was yeah, that was as unusual well. and yeah. really good. And um, so. Yeah, so many authors, and I'm not particularly, I wouldn't say I particularly like female authors more than yeah. male, but I probably do read more yeah, female authors. Like um, but I love Millie Johnson, she's yeah. written, you know, and I, I, I hate this kind of um, slightly snooty attitude yeah. towards um, female authors, which I just don't think m men get in the same no. way. Um, There's not as much if, if snobbery. If David Nichols me. hadn't mm. written one day, if, if say you know Marion Keys or mm. whatever, it wouldn't have been treated in the same way yeah. at all. It was a yeah. really good book. I loved one yeah. day, and I loved Brilliant. David Nichols' work as well. Um, but I just think. Um, there's nothing, I'm in, in the same way that I've never been snooty about daytime television, because yeah. obviously I've been really involved in it. Lots of people are very snooty about it and yeah. kind of, oh, you know, actually it's the hardest medium. And it's Absolutely. a bit similar to tabloid newspapers, yeah. tabloid magazines yeah. versus, you know, highbrow magazines or mm. uh, broadsheet newspapers. There's room for everything. There really is. And writing for the sun yeah. is arguably I'd say much harder than writing for say the observer yeah. and it you know it's a real skill those journalists are it's a bigger really audience really well. good journalists yeah. and it's uh, it, I just I think there's room for all of it yeah. and I, I don't like any kind of snootiness towards any yeah. genre or any sort of aspect there's of just it. There's no need for it. No and I just think if somebody's talented enough to write a book that you really want to read and that you yeah. love reading, then that's a great thing. It's brilliant, and then tell everybody about yes. it. Yes, yeah, 100%. absolutely. Now, this is a great question. Alexia is asking, if Story of Our Lives got made into a film, yeah. which actresses could you imagine playing your characters? Oh my God, <laughs> you can so have anybody. many, so many nights thinking about this. Yeah. Um, 
It's really hard since um, Big Little Lies came mm. along but for me not to kind of go, well, obviously, Reese Witherspoon would yes, be brilliant. That was and a stellar Sophie cast. and, you know, yeah. and, and actually they would all um, yeah. work. Uh, they those, 100% those would, yeah. actresses would all work for yeah. my books. Um, but I, I sort of, I think I would um, like it to be actresses that, weren't that that mm. well known really yeah. in that you know I love I love it when you kind of watch something and think, God, that, she's such a good actress yeah. or she's such a you know she's got such presence but it is quite hard not to think yeah Reese Witherspoon yeah. um and um who was the girl that played in um Big Little Lies um Kravitz is it Zoe Kravitz I mean, she'd be perfect oh, for Melissa. Yeah, she would. She's so perfect for Melissa. Yeah. And she does look exactly like yeah. my friend, yeah. who I based Melissa on as well. So, yeah. And Nicole Kidman would be perfect. And Nicole for Kidman's just lovely and brilliant in well, everything, isn't she? And also, so, she can change her. Yes. You know, yeah, she's herself, a really, Jack really Indian. great actress. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, um, yeah. I, I love Keely Hawes. I don't, I, there's so many actresses yeah. that I really love but yeah. it's quite hard when somebody else has visualized it already and you go yeah. oh yeah she'd have been perfect for my book <laughs> but you never know you they never could know all pop never up, know yeah get british accents yes yeah well um renee zellweger in bridget, bridget jones. jones how amazing was she she was so just good. so perfect yeah and you would never have known she wasn't british no even in bridget jones's baby actually no she's fantastic she's isn't so it? good yeah so actress. yeah any number of send actresses. her the script <laughs> you need to get story of our lives on, into her book club yes yes that's a good yeah. idea yeah that's next next step. on my list next on your list <laughs> um Ed's, edward says we love gossip <laughs> is there any gossip you could tell us from your years in tv oh my god there's so much oh. gossip edward but obviously i'd be sued if i told you any of it so not really no so but yeah not. there's so much gossip <laughs> Love, you, you need to write about the TV world. I know, but you know, I think actually, there's n people aren't that in. Uh, like, I'm interested in it because yeah. I've worked in it. You're probably because yeah. you work in the media, you know. Yeah. Then, but but I'm not sure that the wider world mm. are that interested really in telly mm. or. Well, we buy magazines. Yes, but I think that's sort of different yeah. in that they're people and they're gossip and it's yeah. sort of, it's a little bit different. I don't know if people are that, you know, films and TV series about TV yeah. haven't tended to do that well really mm. in yeah, the Yeah, maybe past. because people feel quite removed from it. Mm. Like it's not a world they understand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, Lindsay is asking, what will you be reading this summer? What have you got oh, in your bag at the moment? Right, I've just um, read B.A. Paris's new one. Oh, um, God, that's cool. It's called Bring Me... Home. Ba no, bring, bring Me Home. Back. Or Bring Me Back. Bring, bring Me, me back. back. So I've just read that, which I really enjoyed. And it then made me remember Behind Closed Doors. <laughs> So I read it again. Did you? Yeah, and uh, because I read it and I devoured it so yeah. much, then I kind of um, just, you know, wolfed it down, like, you know, when you're really hungry and you're kind of, so I read that and then I read it again. I so enjoyed it the second time, yeah. reading it again, how much I loved it. The, another one that I read a few years ago, which I actually read again recently, um, which I loved, um, was called Between You and Me. And I think it was by a girl, a lady called Lisa Hall and oh, it was really this. good there's a massive twist so I can't kind of say mm. too much because it gives it away but it it it's an extraordinary book. brilliant extraordinary it's really brilliant um, I love anything um, by Claire um, Macintosh yes and her first one was I Let You Go? I Let You Go I loved that book I thought I that was fantastic I could hardly breathe throughout it yeah. I was like Get so I thought that was great. Um, so what else have I... I've, I haven't read, and I've, because everybody's talked about it, so I've downloaded it and it's ready to read, is Elef Eleanor... Eleanor Oliphant. Yeah. So I haven't read that yet. Have you read that? It's 
so wonderful. Okay, it's, so well, yeah. I've got that in my um, library ready yeah, to read. Yeah, you must read that, it's beautiful. Um, I've got Leanne Moriarty on order. I've read The Break by oh, Marion Keys. Marion Keys. Um, and which I really enjoyed yeah. and uh, what else have I got? I've downloaded a few that I just kind of go through the um, libraries and think oh that sounds quite good, good. so, just so they're many. not particularly well known I just thought yeah. oh that sounds, sounds good. good so I've downloaded it so and many read books it. so little time yes I know yeah That's I love reading me, though. Yeah. and what's great about when you finish a book and yeah. I've just finished my fifth one so what's so fabulous is that you can read again yeah because obviously when you're writing yeah you need to spend all your time writing of it of course yeah whereas oh, it's the feeling when you finish something and you've typed the end and you kind of go oh my god now right what can i what, what can, can i, I read yeah. and what can i devour so which leads me on to actually um it's gonna be our last question sadly but have you started writing your next book or you were taking a well-deserved break but you've just finished your fifth I just finished it Yes, I've just finished it and it that was hard to write. Um, but it's a bit of a departure for me, I'd mm. say, in that it's quite dark. Yeah. In fact, it's really dark. Yeah. Might explain why I've kind of gone back to BA Paris and Behind yeah. Closed Doors and the Lisa Hall one. Um, yeah, so it's called The Perfect Girl. <laughs> and it was so the premise of it is that um, I know so many people mm. um, who their families have been destroyed by the son getting a girlfriend or right. marrying somebody mm. who decides that she hates their family and is going to throw a, you know is going to throw a bomb into right. the middle of their family and i've always been quite fascinated about it because mm. whenever you say it to anybody they say oh, well, oh yes you know my my brother's wife or, mm. or my cousin's wife or Ugh. everyone has and a story everyone has a story yeah. about somebody that's done that yeah. and so i found it really fascinating so it got it got a bit darker than probably real life normally does yeah. but it's i've really enjoyed writing and when's it. that out that will be out i think a similar time next year wow. or this time next year and um yeah so look out for it the perfect girl and it's yeah it's so I think it's really good. <laughs> so the ink's just drying on that yeah. one, but when are you going to start the sixth, number well, six? Well, yeah, I have got one cooking. Ooh. And so I want to read for a bit, which is my little yeah. pleasure after I've finished a book. And it's such and nice it, weather at the moment, yeah. isn't it? It's perfect reading weather. Oh my weather. gosh, yeah. I love lying out on the sunbed and just, yeah. yeah, reading and reading and reading. So that'll be my... But I will start the sixth in about, yeah, a couple of weeks. Think. Oh. Yeah, it's just cooking. And maybe a follow up. And maybe a f maybe it will be a follow up. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good. I think that's what everyone. I, th I certainly want that. Oh. Definitely, because it's <laughs> so brilliant. Oh, thank um, you. And I think we've got to wrap up now, Excellent. which is so sad because oh. I think there's so many more things to ask. Um, but Helen really wants to give away a signed copy of our story of our lives. So I think we're going to give it away to who the best question that you've right. answered. Okay. Can you remember? I all think now. it was um, Edward. Right, for being cheeky. Yes, yes. I think <laughs> So Edward. you can't give gossip, but you can give a signed yeah. book. Yeah, I can give a signed book. Brilliant. Well, Edward, that's his. Nice right. treat. Thank you so, Thank so, you. so much, Helen. It's I been... hope you, whoever buys it, I hope you yeah. thoroughly enjoy it. It's out today. Like I said, it's a perfect, perfect summer read. Um, everyone needs to go out and buy it <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Amy. Thank you very Thanks. much.